This is Syrian Girl. I want to talk to you about why the New World Order hates Syria and why they are attacking the country now. The New World Order is a plan to bring all nations under the control of one power. Syria has always resisted and is the front lines against the New World Order. One of the ways that Syria resists is that Syria does not have a Rothschild Central Bank. A Rothschild Central Bank is a bank that has been bought by the Rothschild family, one of the richest and most powerful families in the world. It is a bank which is under the control of the Bank of International Settlements, which decides how much money is worth in a nation and how much debt a nation has. In Libya, one of the first things that happened after NATO took over that country is their central bank was turned into a Rothschild central bank. Another way in which Syria resists the New World Order is that it has no loan to the International Monetary Fund, or IMF. Syria, before the crisis began, was a totally debt-free country. If it has ever taken out loans, it was not to the IMF, but to a trusted ally like Russia. The first thing that Egypt's new President Morsi did when he came to power was saddle Egypt with $4 billion worth of IMF debt. Even though he claims to be a Muslim and Islam is against debt and interest. Because Syria owes no money to world powers and her bank is free from foreign control, she is able to choose her own foreign policy. This is why Syria can oppose imperialism like in Palestine, Libya and Iraq and ban genetically modified food. Syria has never had genetically modified food and has recently formalized this into law. Companies like Monsanto are among the war profiteers or dogs of war. When Iraq was invaded, one of the first things that US's Bremer changed in the Iraqi constitution was to make it illegal for farmers to store their own seeds and force them to buy genetically modified seed from Monsanto. Genetically modified seeds are very expensive and carry a promise of being better than natural seeds. Many Indian farmers who bought the seeds and had their crops fail that year committed suicide because they had no money to buy new seeds from Monsanto and couldn't have saved their own seeds because they had entered a contractual agreement to purchase seeds from Monsanto. Famine reigned as a result. Controlling food supply is yet another constraint the New World Order uses to keep countries in check and bring them under the control of the One World Government. Syria resists these steps to control her. Syrian state media doesn't shy away from discussions of secret societies. In Syria, talk of secret societies is not seen as a fringe conspiracy, but mainstream. Those that tell you it is not significant that two US presidential candidates, Bush and Kerry, were both members of the same tiny secret society, the Skull and Bones, are willingly blind. Oil and energy flow is yet another way in which the world powers bring nations to their knees. And yet another reason why Syria is a target. Syria recently discovered gas off its coast and she was working on a new pipeline going through Iran, Iraq and Syria to Europe that would rival the BTC pipeline currently going through Israel. Forcing oil to pass through Israel through the BTC pipeline is the way in which the New World Order uses Israel as their hub of control of the oil flow between Europe, Asia and Africa. They can turn off the tap whenever they want and that brings nations under their umbrella. Syria's attempt to give the world an alternative route for oil and gas could have been a way to free the world and put a wrench in the plans of the global dominators. And I have spoken about this at length, but Syria is one of the last countries left that does not recognize the apartheid state of Israel and resists the Zionist agenda, which is a large part of the New World Order. 
This is one of the main reasons the New World Order sees Syria as an obstacle to its plans, and this point requires an individual video. Another reason why the New World Order hates Syria is that it is a secular country in the Middle East. Afghanistan, Libya, Iraq, and much of North Africa were secular nations. But after the Iraq War, Iraq was given a more theocratic Shiite government. After the Arab Spring and the NATO bombardment of Libya, it was given a Wahhabi extremist government. And recently, Egypt became a Muslim Brotherhood nation, another theocracy. And with Israel being the extremist Jewish theocracy in this region, Syria is really the last secular country left in the Middle East. In Syria, asking someone what their religion is, is insulting. And if an outsider asks you what it is, you can't help but feel a little bit defensive. And the common answer is, I am Syrian. All the prime religions have lived there in peace for hundreds of years and with freedom to practice. Divide and conquer is a strategy which the world powers use to control nations and Syria's unity has been a way to resist that. Syria has a very strong national and cultural identity. If you have ever travelled the world, you will notice that you can find the same shops and the same culture being spread everywhere. You can find the same clothing item in a shop in Dubai that you can find in a shop in France. This is not the case for Syria, but these reforms really only went so far to open up Syria's economy and Syria still resisted entry of foreign companies. And I think this is one of the other reasons that Syria is hated by the New World Order. Syria is one of the last countries that remain distinct from everywhere else. And I believe there's a clear New World Order agenda to make everywhere look pretty much the same and thereby create no more nations and one world government. What a boring world that would be. The New World Order hates Syria because Syria is free. So Orwellian it is that they shout free Syria when they really try to enslave her. If Syria falls, it could be a tipping point that ends up in victory for the New World Order like Stalingrad was a tipping point between Germany and Russia in World War II. Syria resists in spite of all the massive power of the nations against her. She resists not just for herself, but for every free person. As I said earlier, Syria is the front lines against the New World Order. So fight alongside us until the end.